hi everybody um it's the third of the session so my challenge is to to keep this fresh from myself uh saying things the third time around i'm amar I'm, I'm chief quality officer at east london foundation trust and i what i wanted to share with you all was um how we've been applying qi now to populations and thinking about equity um and I, what I, I haven't got any i haven't got any slides but i, I wanted to describe to you um, some of the transition we've made uh, and give you a few couple of examples and then open up for some discussion about things that might be of interest to you. So some of you will probably know, but uh, we began using QI in, at Elft about seven years ago. And a lot of the early QI work um, was, was about fairly traditional improvement work around safety or flow or staff experience, um, you know, one domain of quality, um, as you'd expect and mostly service-based. Um, in 2017, we, we began a big conversation across the organization to start asking the question, what do we wanna be in the future? Uh, what, 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 what do we wanna to offer to, to our communities as a refresh of our strategy? And we moved from a mission around providing the highest quality care to improving the quality of life for everyone we serve. It's a big shift, a small, small shift in words, but quite a big shift. And, and that led to us adding in a fourth objective for our organization, which was around population health, really explicit population health objective for us uh, and the, our board. And there still aren't that many NHS trusts, I think, that really call out population health as a strategic objective. So we realized at that point that our QI work would also have to expand to think about populations um, and equity. And, and this, is, this is how we've tried to apply our QI approach to to a population. Um, most of you will know from your own QI experience that when you start a piece of QI work, you're often asking, you know, where, where is there an opportunity to improve our service? You know, what are people not happy with? Where, where is the biggest opportunity for improvement? Um, with with population-based QI work, you're, you're starting from a different place. We often start by asking the question, who's not thriving? Uh, where is there a group of people whose needs are not being met by the system? Um, and immediately you start looking at a group of people rather than a service. You're thinking really from a population perspective than a service perspective from the outset. And you start then to define the population that you're going to work with. And, and a population can be a group of people with a similar set of needs. And you can define that in any way. It can be based on diagnosis or based on condition or health need. But it could also be based on geography or demographics or ethnicity there's a whole number of ways you can define a population but essentially it's a group of people with a similar set of needs such that I could design a set of interventions to meet that need um, and then with all good QI work you, you you go to deeply understand before you think about how to improve and, and the way that we do that with this type of work is is a three-part data review a really quick and dirty three parts one part is what what data can what quantitative data can we easily get access to that tells us something second part is talking to people in the population itself so you know open questions like what matters to you what does your daily routine look like what's a good day for you uh, where does the system not help you who, who do you go to for help and support um, those sorts of questions and then the third part is talking to people who work with the population so that could be healthcare staff it could be family members it could be anyone really who works with them to say you know what what helps in the system uh, what keeps you awake at night those, those sorts of questions and you very rapidly get a sense of things that are that matter to the, this group of people that are largely not health related um, and you find out about a whole load of assets in the community that are largely not health related um, then then we use that to create an asset map so a map of what exists around this group of people to help them stay well. Um, and then we build a theory. So as with most QI work, at the point you deeply understood the system, you would, you would think about how would I improve the system? And so we create a driver diagram to say, you know, here's what's already happening to support this group of people, but we think we need to add in a few things to that. So a, a, a driver diagram that includes a portfolio of projects, six or seven things that we think will improve outcomes. Now, with a normal QI project, you would have a single aim. You know, you might be improving flow or you might be improving safety. But with this kind of work, you're achieving the triple aim, which is three things at once. 
not only improving quality of care, but also improving population outcomes and improving value for the system. So three things at once, it makes it much harder. And you, we need to work with partners to achieve that. So we're really thinking about, you know, from all of the assets and partners we identified in our scoping stage, you know, who could we work with? Who could we partner with to, to do this work together? Um, and, then, and then obviously you create a measurement plan, although obviously rather than one outcome measure, you have multiple outcome measures because you're trying to achieve many, three aims at once. Um, and then you create a learning system to bring people together to, to update and learn from each other as the work progresses. So that's sort of the, the, the way in which we apply QI with, with some adaptation to think about populations with equity right at the start of uh, defining the population and choosing the groups we work with. And, and a few examples of the types of work we've got going on. One, one piece of work in Tower Hamlets is with people who are living in homeless hostels. Uh, we've got a, a, a project in Newham working with people who are who have a BMI of over 40 and are housebound. We've got a project working with um, adolescents who are at risk of self-harm in one school in each of the five boroughs in which we operate in London and Bedfordshire. Um, and, uh, and a population of people who are frail, who have uh, dementia or mild cognitive impairment in, in one geographical area in rural Bedfordshire. So there's, there's a whole range of different populations, but it starts out with asking the question, who's not thriving? Where, where does the system really not meet the needs of a particular group of people? And then using our QI expertise and method to, to, to work that through. Um, now, you'll probably have picked up two things already from that. One is that this work is harder because you have to Im involve a whole range of partners in the work. People who are uh, not healthcare organizations may never have heard of QI, never have learned about it. And secondly, that this work will take longer. It's not a, an improvement project that you'll be able to start and finish in six to nine months. Most of these pieces will take you two or three years probably to work through. So that's... Um, a little summary of how we've been using QI um, to tackle population health and equity. And, and I'm just gonna pause there and invite people to comment or bring in questions or things that piqued your interest you wanna find out a bit more about. 